Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button, also subscribe to the channel. 2017 is lit. I'm working hard for you guys. Right now, I'm on the WBC's official website. So, I found this interesting. You guys seen the title regarding Danny Garcia, and I'm going to show you just so you know there's no foul play. I'm not making it up, anything like this. So, again, this is the WBCboxing.com. This is their website. You click on the champions world champions it's all about that green belt it's all about them world champions right and it's funny i haven't heard anyone talk about this wbc news so let's see how many people talk about it after this video ratings now they just updated their ratings you can separate it by the classes and let's check out welterweight bam now keith thurman is the champion right we all know that he beat danny garcia in march big fight some people were underwhelmed, but it was a fight that needed to happen. The Meritus champion, none other than easy work, Floyd Mayweather, right? But now, if you see the rankings, they elevated Danny Garcia to the number one mandatory spot. Now, that spot, to my knowledge, when Danny Garcia had the WBC belt, it was Amir Khan who was the number one mandatory for Danny Garcia. But because Danny Garcia lost to Keith Thurman, I guess I see to be honest I'm gonna tell you guys straight up I don't know how these rankings work and how the ratings work in terms of each sanctioning body I don't know because I've seen stuff like the WBC for example Amir Khan was fighting at 140 and then he got knocked out by Danny Garcia and I think he had maybe one more fight against Carlos Molina and he beat him and before he even had one fight at welterweight he moved he said he was moving up but before he even had a fight, they had Amir Khan ranked at number one back then. So I don't really know how they come up with this. Maybe this is based on your body of work. Same thing with Jamal Charlo. He just announced that he's moving up from 154 junior middle to the full middleweight division of 160 where Golovkin's at. And the WBC have him ranked at number two. Meanwhile, the number one guy, Sebastian Jorge Highland or whatever, He's been number one for a while. So I don't know how Jamal Charlo has no fights at 160 and he's already rated number two above guys like David Lemieux or whoever else has been fighting at 160. So again, I don't know exactly how it works, especially when fighters are moving up. I don't know how they calculate it and tabulate who gets placed where. Obviously wins versus losses that has effect, but Danny Garcia just lost. Amir Khan just lost, but Amir Khan lost at 155 so I really don't know how they deem the number one person in a lot of these situations but maybe they have a board meeting and discuss who should be where I don't know I don't know how it works you guys have to contact the WBC I just found this interesting and wanted to make a, a video what does this mean possibly a Keith Thurman versus Danny Garcia part two rematch now Angel Garcia you a bitch ass nigga. No, nah, I'm playing. <laughs> Angel Garcia was complaining like he wants his son to retire after the fight. He, he felt robbed and felt Danny did enough to win and said he didn't want a rematch. But he li he later changed that and said, nah, we do want a rematch. So I'm, I'm sure the Swift team would like a rematch to get some get back now, even though Angel said at a point in time he wasn't. He wanted Danny to retire and he didn't even want a rematch. So. I'm going to go through the top five. Danny Garcia now at number one. Amir Khan, number two. Sean Porter, three. Andre Berto, four. Now, the Sean Porter Berto fight, April 22nd, Barclays on Showtime. That's supposed to be an eliminator, also. So I don't know how. I thought, to me, I thought Berto Porter winner becomes the number one mandatory, but they put Danny Garcia then. So again, I don't know exactly how it works. I'm just reporting the facts you guys can contact the wbc and they have bradley who's been where is bradley been ever since the pacquiao do, 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 knocked him down two times in the third fight it's like he, he's been mia i talked to him about a month ago top rank had a fight card he has a fighter he's mentoring and he came out it was right around the fresno area but 
I mean, I just haven't seen him in the ring, man. Like, Bradley's a hell of a fighter, solid resume, can really test any of these guys. So, I would like to see him come back. He's in at number five. And then you got Jesse Vargas, Constantine Potomarov at seven, Broner at eight. So, I don't know how this works, but this looks like it could lead to a Keith one time, you better not duck me, son, rematch with Danny Garcia. I mean, he's in the number one slot. Now, there's also Lamont Peterson is the WBA, I believe, the the other belt that Keith Thurman has. Keith Thurman is the only welterweight champion with two belts. You have Kell Brook, who has one belt. He has the IBF belt. You have Manny Pacquiao, who's fighting Jeff Horn. God knows why. And he has the WBO belt. Keith Thurman is the only guy at welterweight that has more than one belt. So one time turned to two time. I want to know from you guys, what do you think? Do you want to even see a Keith Thurman, Danny Garcia rematch? I think... I'm okay with it. Um, maybe see what adjustments both fighters can make. I still feel the same way about the first fight. I had Keith Thurman winning, but I don't think he did himself any favors in terms of he did what he had to do to win, and that's fine. You could say, oh, he played it safe, and he didn't give Danny Garcia any opportunities. But to me, what he was doing in those early rounds, first three rounds or so, was awesome. And he was really getting Danny Garcia's respect. And I didn't really see any immediate danger in him doing that. It looked like Danny couldn't keep up with his speed. Plus, he had to respect Keith Thurman's power. You know what I mean? So, again, I'm from the old school. If, if the plan, if the game plan ain't, if it hasn't stopped working, then keep doing it. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't really see the need for Keith Thurman to change the plan. It really reminded me of Oscar De La Hoya versus Felix Tito Trinidad. If, if you're, if what you're doing is working, why change it? Another fight that comes to mind is Tim Desert Storm Bradley versus Jesse Vargas. If you watch that fight, Bradley was throwing these crazy looping, wide clubbing, clubber laying, like haymaker shots at Jesse Vargas when they fought for 11 rounds. And you know what? Even though it was kind of wild. Jesse Vargas had no answer for it, right? And Tim Bradley was clearly winning those rounds. Then all of a sudden in the 12th round, the very last round, Tim Bradley decides to stick and move and box and move. And that's when Jesse Vargas got his timing down because he had slowed up and he wasn't throwing these crazy shots at Jesse Vargas and being so aggressive. And Jesse Vargas, the taller fighter, timed him with the perfect right and nearly got him out of there. You know what I mean? And then there was a premature stoppage and all that. So I'm not really a big fan of switching a working game plan. And I, I kind of feel that's what Keith Thurman did. Again, he did what he had to do to win. I respect him as an undefeated champion. He's a good fighter. I just don't think, because if you look at it, the, what I've seen is, yeah, you're in, the, you're in the potential danger for Danny Garcia to time you. But at, at the same time, you're also making your performance less emphatic. You know, It's less of a statement to the welterweight division. And again, I, of course, your goal is not to get knocked out after you did all that great work early. But the thing is, when he started doing the moving and he slowed down and he wasn't as aggressive and he got on his bike more, that's when Danny Garcia had his best rounds. So again, I don't, I don't understand the logic. I understand it keeps you safe. You just peek your head in and bop, bop. And then you just get moved because Danny Garcia, he, he's not fast footed, so he can never catch up to you. So I get it. You're staying perfectly safe because, you know, he can't he can't fuck with your speed. But at the same time, Danny Garcia was at least trying to cut off the ring. He was the aggressor. And those are the rounds he actually won. He wasn't winning the rounds where Keith Thurman was a bit more aggressive put some punches together, took stands, and used less lateral movement. So, again, for me, that's just my personal taste. Keith Thurman's a good fighter. I just don't understand why he did it to that extent. Same thing with Edis Landi Lada versus Canelo. Movement, I, you never hear me do videos talking about this fighter ran and that. I, I respect different fight games and different approaches, but Edis Landi Lada in the fight with Canelo you leave it up to the imagination and leave it up for interpretation when you start using unnecessary movement. Like, I understand you don't want to get knocked out. You out, you're out outboxing Canelo, but 
that was his best rounds when you, because you let off the gas with your offense. That's kind of what Keith Thurman did, you know what I mean? And Canelo in his fight with Lada, he was destroying Lada's body. You know what I'm saying? So you have to occasionally take stands. That's why, to me, Floyd Mayweather is such a smart fighter and people don't really pay attention to little subtle things is because, if anything, he almost does the reverse. He'll start off slow, fill you out, collect his data, and after he has you figured out, by, that's when he gets better you know what I'm saying and there's a lot of champions that I, I feel feel do that is they don't start off strong and as the like same thing with Chocolatito he started off real strong versus Carlos Quadras but as the fight wore on that's when you should be more comfortable early on you should be maybe you know I me mean, feel this person out that's just how I see it Chocolatito got worse as as the Quadras fight progressed he looked fatigued same thing with Kovalev versus Andre Ward Ward got better as the second half commenced and Kovalev tapered off right and that's kind of what it was with Keith Thurman I thought he was completely dominating the first half of the fight where he was winning the rounds clear and then he started using a bunch of movement Danny was in pursuit and that's what made those rounds some of those rounds swing rounds and up for interpretation and I just don't see him needing to have done that because it's not like Danny Garcia caught him with something but I don't know he's a fighter maybe he felt Danny Garcia's power or something and he's like man this is the the safest way to a victory I don't know but just from the outside looking in that's what I seen always stick to the working game plan like I said Floyd Mayweather very smart fighter he actually gets better if you watch the Canelo Alvarez fight he started off aggressive then he seen Canelo was not for play and then he got back to his boxing but by the 11th round He's, he's clowning Canelo, and that's where he's in pocket. Same thing with Floyd versus Robert Guerrero, or really any of the fights. Cotto, he almost stopped Cotto in the 12th round. Some of y'all probably didn't see that because you don't know shit about boxing. But he caught Cotto with, I believe, an uppercut and had Cotto buckled. You know what I'm saying? So Floyd actually gets better as the fight wears on once he has you figured out. Keith Thurman started off great, and then he just kind of fizzled out and use some movement did what he had to do to win but I, I don't think he had to do it to that extent I think he could have won those rounds it wouldn't have been up for debate and Angel wouldn't have been able to say anything if if you're a couple rounds in the second half look like round one or two you know what I mean that's just my opinion but Danny Garcia is now the number one mandatory so maybe they'll issue that it's it's crazy in the world of boxing being a champion you know what I mean you got people, especially you have more than one belt, you have people coming from all angles. Lamont Peterson maybe gets a Keith Thurman shot. You got to possibly face Danny Garcia again. Berto Porter winner, so maybe a Porter rematch. Or Andre Berto, your friend. It's just like when you're in that top seat in that throne, you got to scrap with somebody. Kell Brook, Errol Spence, Jr. winner. Some great fights out there. I mean, I would say Pacquiao, but he's fighting Jeff Horn, which leads me to believe that they have no interest in fighting the top guys because Keith Thurman has already called out Pacquiao for at least 10 months over a year, 10 months to a year, probably longer than that. I've done videos there on the channel and Pacquiao and team decided to fight Jeff Horn. So interesting stuff with the welterweight division. Let me know what you guys think. Amir Khan gets bumped to number two. So I don't know. I don't know if they'll do like a, an eliminator with Danny Garcia and Khan and then the Berto Porter winner, and then those two fight. That would be that would be cool. Danny Garcia rematches Khan. I would like something like that. Danny Garcia versus Amir Khan, like a round robin style. Have that rematch. The winner of Garcia Khan two fights the winner of Berto, Porter Berto, and then that winner maybe get a shot at Keith Thurman. But we'll see. If you guys have more information on how, how the WBC ranks the people and moving up and the schematics, let me know. Drop it in the comment section. Make sure you share the video, like the video as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego, signing off.